Thank you. Uh, I have to admit uh, I'm in a difficult situation because uh, this, uh, this talk was supposed to be given by two people, uh, Andre, my colleague, and me. But unfortunately, Andre, uh, on the way uh, here, he got into a traffic accident. So I will have to improvise to, to tell you something uh, which was supposed to be, to be told by Andre. And frankly speaking, I, I don't know much about what he was going to tell you. So I will try to improvise. But I please tell us that he's OK. He's, he's quite all right, just he, his car is damaged. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Damaged. But yeah, but every, everyone is in good condition. So my name is Anton. I work for IP on web. And my talk is uh, about uh, a custom load balancing solution uh, basing on Nginx and Lua. This uh, solution was mostly designed by my colleague Andrei Kononov and uh, I helped him. This is one of and Andrei's slides. Uh, we have lots of backend servers and we have a few, maybe one or two balancers running Nginx, uh, and before the balancers, there's another layer of load balancing, geo DNS pool. That is, for example, users from the Americas go to one balancer, and European users go to another. So, I will tell you about this Nginx proxy. But lots of technical requirements. Another Andre's slide. Uh, the task was to uh, provide a load balancing solution, uh, fulfilling a set of requirements uh, to provide a correct HTTP answer to every user request to provide for SSL, uh, redundancy, and sticky balancing. And there are other requirements. So firstly, uh, Andre uh, considered uh, already existing solutions, because there are actually quite a few load balancers, you know. Like, for example, HA proxy or HA proxy, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Lighty, then Nginx, and all these three solutions uh, turned out to be not enough for our needs. They uh, do some kind of sticky balancing, uh, sticky balancing, but it happens to be too sticky in a way. That is, for example, uh, well, I, I hope uh, at least anyone knows what sticky balancing is. So sticky balancing means that if a user comes to a server, for example, a user from Jamaica came and he ended up served with this backend server. So when that user uh, gives Another, makes another request later, he should end up in this same server. That is sticky balancing. Not any other server, but the same. All of the user's requests should end up in this backend server. That is sticky balancing. So again, as I told you, there are many uh, st uh, solutions available on the market, uh, providing sticky balancing, but in this way or that, they, own, uh, they all didn't satisfy us. 
enough. So we had to build our own solution based on Nginx plus Lua. Well, another Andres, uh, another slide of Andres. He was supposed to, well, to tell you an interesting story, how he tested this solution, how he monitored it, yeah, and some performance data. Well, performance data is quite interesting and I, well, at least I understand what this is about. So, uh, this is performance data uh, of our solution. A single balancer uh, can, uh, uh, it can um, work with 180k packets per second, which is roughly 500 megabits per second total network throughput. And in terms of HTTP requests, that is 20,000 requests per second. 20,000 HTTP requests per second. Which is, well, I suppose I can call this high load. Uh, and this, well, these figures actually are dwarfed by what uh, another speaker told us that some one million packets per second, but his solution works on real bare metal, real service. Our solution works on Amazon virtual server. So it works on, uh, on hardware, well, not that even on hardware, I, it works on a virtual server which is several times slower than a real server. So these figures would be quite higher, several times higher, I, I suppose, if we could run it on bare metal real servers. But we, we only have uh, Amazon virtual servers. So I, I think I can say the figures are quite high. Let me tell you uh, about my part of the uh, of the job. Once upon a time, a project manager comes to me and says, Anton, please help Andre to develop a custom load balancing solution based on Nginx plus a few lines in Lua. The task is to distribute HTTP requests from users among N servers so that the following requirements are met. When you add an additional server, vast majority of users should not change their servers. And only one nth of users can move from uh, old servers to the newly added server. And user key, which determines if two requests come from the same user or two different users, may be calculated in an arbitrarily complex way, involving, for example, IP address of the user, his cookies, URL parameters, etc., or any combination of them. The, the task, uh, again, it can look like normal, usual, vanilla, sticky balancing, but unfortunately it is not. So, we, we need a custom solution. Uh, well, dividing user requests into n pieces may seem a trivial task, uh, having a trivial solution. Uh, just, just take a hash function from the user key and modulus modulus n, where n is the number of the servers. And that gives you the number of the server to use. Pretty simple. Let's have a closer look at how this solution works. Uh, for clarity, uh, suppose we only have two servers, server 0 and server 1. And just six users whose hashes 
are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So uh, using our modulus formula, 0 modulus 2 is 0, so user 0 goes to server 0, user 2 and user 4, and every user with a, an even hash function goes to server 0, and every user with a odd hash function goes to server 1. So every other user goes to server 0, and every other user goes to server 1. It's pretty simple. Now, uh, what happens if we add a third server? Users 0 and 1 remain at, the, uh, at their old servers. They don't change. Uh, obviously, two users, user 2 and user 5, uh, should go to the newly added server 2. And that's okay. That's what we expect. And the, the problem is that user 3 and user 4 also change their servers. User 3 goes from, well, from green to red, from server 0 to server 1, uh, sorry, or from server 1 to server 0, and user 4, vice versa. So, only two users out of six, which is one third of the users, don't change their server. And the remaining two thirds of the users change their server. And uh, uh, in a more general case with n servers, it is easy to show that this naive approach, let's call it a naive approach, either adding one server or removing one server results in only a small fraction of users not to change server, while majority of users does change their server. In certain situations, like Mr. Obama's presidential campaign, change is a good thing, or, uh, or at least uh, promising it to the voters. But our case is completely different. We want as little change as possible. So this naive approach fails. After thinking this over and reading a couple of Wikipedia articles on hashing and double hashing and maybe something else, I was convinced that what the manager told me to do was impossible. And I was going to say it was impossible to the manager when all of a sudden our chief technology officer came to me and said, not only is it possible, it is clearly written in Wikipedia, just go read the, the right article. And the article is called Consistent Hashing. So which is a pretty interesting algorithm, which I'd like to tell you about. In consistent hashing, you take a circle, and for each server, suppose we only have two servers, uh, red and green, you pseudorandomly mark a certain amount P of points, here, P equals to 4, uh, which means we have 4 red and 4 green points on the circle. Then you calculate a hash from the user key and consider it an angle in the circle, which gives you a certain point on the circle. And then from that point, you go in anti-clockwise direction and whatever point, whatever colored point you meet first, uh, it, it represents the server this user should go to. So in this case, the user should go to the red server because the, the point is red. The more is the number of the point, P, and the more even is 
the uh, pseudorandom distribution of the points, the more equal loads will the red and green server experience. Now, what happens if we add a third server? Suppose it is blue. So we just need to add four points, four blue points on the uh, circle again in a pseudorandom way. And uh, the users whose angle ends uh, up within the blue ox should go to this new blue server, while all the rest go to, well, their uh, respective red or green servers. In this way, uh, approximately one-third of the users uh, become blue, let's call them. And what is very important is that under no circumstances will any user switch from red to green or from green to red. That, that's impossible. These points never swap, they never change their position. So, so you, uh, this algorithm, because of this, this algorithm solves our problem. Uh, now we have uh, the algorithm and uh, an implementation just sounds like uh, a couple of hours of coding in Lua, isn't it? Well, it, it would be, actually, it would be in some ideal world, but the, uh, in real world, we experienced lots of difficulties trying to implement this algorithm uh, in Lua under in, in Lua under Nginx. The first problem was we cannot create consistent hash data structure, which is a CPU intensive operation in Nginx initialization stage. We have to wait until the first user makes uh, makes the first request and then build the structure. Another problem is determining if the server is alive, we need to send an HTTP request to it. When we used Lua module socket to do this, uh, Nginx sometimes, though not always, just dumped core. It, it died without uh, any error message, uh, let alone a, a any useful error message. So it just died dumping core. The next problem was deadlock when rehashing using a single Nginx worker process. It made us to create several, more than one Nginx worker processes. And the last problem was timeouts when stress testing this in Amazon uh, Web Services environment. We had to use at least two powerful eight core virtual servers to test the solution. Because of all of the above, uh, what seemed to be a few hours of Lua coding ended up in several weeks of troubleshooting, debugging, and bug fixing. The story does have a happy end, otherwise you, you wouldn't have seen me here. Yeah, that's why you see me here. So the story does have a happy end. And let me tell you a few words about the solution. The solution is about 300 lines in Lua, including lots of debug messages. So not all of those 300 lines are, well, about the problem. Then the solution uses Nginx, Lua JIT, Lua JIT, uh, Lua Nginx module, and Lua Upstream Nginx module, two uh, Nginx modules. The config is written by sysadmins, and it is a Lua program, different one in every different project. And the solution sim seems efficient enough to saturate one gigabit uh, gigabit per second network interface uh, 
with CPU usage less than 50% on a so-called eight-core virtual Amazon Web Services instance. So that's a not real computer, that's a virtual machine. And here's how a, a sample config, this config, how it look, looks like. So it is a, a single Lua function uh, returning a so-called user ID, which is a string, based on Nginx variables. This string will determine to which server the user the user's request will be sent. In this case, everyone using Microsoft Internet Explorer yeah, here, there, uh, is diverted to the same web server. Then, uh, if the user has a certain cookie here, cookie foobar, so a cookie called foobar, and it is not empty or invalid, then the cookie is used as user key. If the user, uh, if the cookie is missing, then URL parameters, seller ID and uh, buyer ID are used in this order. And if we don't have anything as the last resort, the user's remote, uh, the user's IP address is used. So this is an example of config. Well, this is it. Thank you very much for your attention. And should you have any uh, any questions, uh, I'd be glad to answer them. Did you try to profile it? Because was in eight cores for one gigabit is too much, I think, for balancer. You think that's too much? Mm, I'm not a professional big in these things, but I think it's too much. Well, uh, let me tell you this. Uh, CPU is not a problem here. I, I, it's not a bottleneck. The bottleneck happens to be the network interface. So we, we, we don't need to, to boil this down further because we already have enough CPU. You see, in the servers we use, CPU I is not at a premium. Uh, Network <coughs> interface is the bottleneck. There was numbers that you need eight cores to fulfill one gigabit. Actually, you see, the problem is we don't need eight cores, and those okay. are not eight cores. Those are what Amazon I calls cores. You, you know Amazon Web Services. Not so much, but I... So <laughs> that core means uh, one hyper-threading thread. So four-core <laughs> Intel okay. chip has eight cores, uh, according to Amazon, you see? And uh, we just didn't test this uh, heavily on uh, okay, if it's on, on the servers with less, than less CPU. Half, maybe, maybe, okay. Uh, why didn't you use existing consistent hashing libraries, Kitama, for example? Why didn't we use an existing library? Yeah. Well, we, uh, we tried, actually, we, we tried to adapt some solutions and uh, it turned out that some of them are unusable. For example, we, uh, I tried to adapt an algorithm for, uh, from Perl CPAN, a module, I'm not sure about the name, but uh, providing consistent hashing. Yeah, and uh, sorry, but that's algorithm, I mean uh, that's existing a implementation. Yeah, that's an implementation. Oh, okay, in Perl. It in Perl, yes, uh -huh. in Perl. And it turned out to be not consistent at all. It's not consistent. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, have you tried lib libketama? Uh, no. Okay. It doesn't work, right? The problem with ketama is uh, you actually need a lot of uh, servers to begin with, a lot of points on this consistent hash ring. 
and it uh, takes uh, quite a bit of memory to actually create this point and manage this point, these points. So I think, uh, I don't know whether it, the guys looked at the library, but anyone here in our office who looked at it, they, we actually use uh, a homegrown solution, which is called Sumbur, which was written a while ago for, for our, our load balancing. But the principle is the same, so you, it is consistent. Of course, but is it open source? Sumbur is open source, yes. Uh, does it have lower bindings? Uh, no, but it would be a cake to, to make. So oh, okay. It's just a small function, that uh, a small recursive function, I think even a yeah. tail recursion. Okay. More questions? No, I have no questions, but uh, comment. Nginx version 1.7.2 already has consistent hashing, including Ketama algorithm. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you very much.